Hi, today we are discussing the role of stem cell in severe and critically sick patient in COVID-19 viral infection. I am Dr. Ashok Kumar, consultant orthopedic surgeon and regenerative medicine expert. This is my disclaimer, there is no conflict of interest. So the first message is we need to stay safe and that is by staying at home. What is the purpose of this presentation? Actually, the, if we see the, the op treatment options in the presentation, Actually, if you see that the stem cell treatment is missing from the list of potential treatment options. And we need to understand how stem cell work and can the stem cell save life in severe and critically sick COVID-19 infection. Is there any evidence for it? And also we will discuss what is the role of other treatment options in COVID-19 infections. So first we go to the stem cell. The stem cell are in simple term, they are called MSC, which means mesenchymal stem cell. There's also two other name called mesenchymal stromal cells or medicinal signaling cells. But what I actually believe when we have published recently that these should be called maintenance stem cell which means MSC maintenance stem cell and the reason is their origin may not be just only from mesodermal tissue they may be from endodermal also because the research is going on they have stem cell which means they can increase their number they can also convert into other cell type like bone cells, cartilage cell and the fat cell outside the body. When these cells are implanted into the body, they do the same. So basically what they are doing, they are maintaining and promoting a healing environment. And that's why they should be called maintenance stem cell. Now, how stem cell work? Well, in the literature, we come across that they are anti-inflammatory, which means they bring down the inflammation. They, immuno, they are immunomodulatory, which means they control the level of immune reactions. They also help in formation of new blood vessels, which help in healing and regeneration. They also affect the number of the cells which are dying, which is also called programmed cell death. Now these actions we can broadly classify into three level of action and these are called FIR, SIR, LIR which we will discuss in the subsequent slide. So this is the first. This is the proposed mechanism for these mesenchymal or maintenance stem cell. So what happened once you implant a stem cell into the body majority of them they die and only small percentage of the cell survive but before dying what they do they release lot of growth factors cytokines and extracellular vesicles now these factors they start fir which means they start facilitating the pro-growth environment. Pro-growth environment means when the inflammation is less, cells are not dying, and when inflammation is healing, it's healing in a good tissue, not in fibrosis, and there is a number of new blood vessel formations. And this is the environment when the stem cell, the local stem cell can work. So basically in the body, every T organ or tissue, they have local stem cell, but they are usually sleeping. They are not working or they are weak. Once you inject the stem cell from the outside, most of them they die. 
and the remaining they release growth factors. These growth factor induce or wake up these sleeping cells, which is called induction of local resident stem cell. What they do, they supply energy, signal and local support so that these local stem cell, they become active and they follow the function of the implanted stem cell. And ultimately the number of these active local stem cell increases and also the remaining new mesenchymal stem cell, they also increase and which help in promoting a healing environment. Once the first induction response is there, it is followed by a sustained response, which means the pro-environment is still continuing and the local stem cell are still active and the implanted surviving mesenchymal cell, they are helping these local cells. After some time, this stimulus by the implanted cell to the local stem cell start declining. And then the local stem cell again become weak. Their number become less, the energy is less, and they start producing less growth factors. So basically you implant a cell, which start this induction of local stem cell and the healing, then it continue and then it limited. If you want to continue this cascade of healing, then you need to re-implant again and then this cascade continue. This has been published, now it's available as abstract in archive and bone joint sur surgery and it will be fully text available maybe in the next month. Now we talk about the COVID viral infection. As you know, it has become a global epidemic. More than 334,000 are confirmed cases. Number of deaths are also increasing. So. The main target of COVID infection is the lung. If we see this is a part of the lung which is alveoli, there are two kind of cell. One is type 1 which help in oxygen transfer and this is type 2 which is a defense for fighting against the insult. And you have these blood vessels. So the main target is the type 2 epithelial cell. So basically the virus is damaging the defense mechanism in the lung. Now, the, it's not the number of the virus or the virulence or the viral load which is killing the people. Actually, it is a reaction of our body which is driving a storm. This storm is called cytokine storm, which means our body is producing so many inflammatory marker, mainly interleukin-1, 6, 12, 18, 13, and alpha interferon and alpha tumor necrotic factors, and also other inflammatory chemokines, which are overdriving the immune response. And these cytokines, they cause capillary leakage, there is a leakage of the fluid from the blood vessel into the alveoli, mucus plugging, and there is an over flooding of the lung, which is causing impaired oxygenation and respiratory failure. Now, COVID virus, when it enters in our body, it enters into the human cell by combining a receptor which is called ACE2 receptor, which is an angiotensin converting enzyme to receptor. Unfortunately, in human body, all our vital organs, which include lung, kidney, liver, heart and the blood vessels, they have these receptors. And that's why he's the virus is targeting these uh, vital organs. Fortunately, the stem cells, they are negative for these receptors, which means they are resistant to this infection. Now, what happens when there is a severe infection, as we discussed in the previous slide, it creates a cytokine storm. And these storm damages the lung cells, damage the blood vessel in the lung, cause over flooding and cause ARDS. It also affects the other organs like heart and kidney causing multi-organ failure and the patient need to be septed on mechanical ventilation and which need, which cause problems of mechanical ventilation, fluid problem, infection or electrolyte. 
Now this is the classification used by National Health Commission of China. Anybody who need a ventilator or in shock or if they have organ failure which means it's critically severe. And anybody who have respiratory distress which means respiratory rate more than 30 or oxygen saturation is less than 93 at rest that means it's severe. Now we talk about what are the treatment options which are being tried for COVID infection. One of them is an antiretroviral drug, which is the name of Calectra. It's actually a combination of lopinavir and ritonavir. Recently, one study has been published by KOL in New England Journal Medicine, and they basically did a randomization of 199 patients. One the arm of the patient were given the Calectra and other was given the placebo. And their result shows that there is no difference statistically between the death and the response. So their conclusion was that there is not any significant difference and more studies are required. Now recently after uh, more information, the chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine with antibiotic azithromycin are coming up and actually what does what how does the chloroquine affect the virus there are two ways one way is inside our cells we have a small bubble kind of a thing which are called endosomes now this chloroquine it reduces the ph which means it makes more alkaline so once it's alkaline, it prevents the fusion of the virus with the endosome. And prevention of this fusion prevents the viral replication. The another way how it works is basically on the AC2 receptor, which is the main receptor on which the virus is binding. It prevents the glycosylation. Now once it's not happening, the virus affinity to binding this receptor become less. And also outside the body in a study it has been shown that they are inhibiting the virus. Now in some study like one study is from the French trial which has been done by Gautre. They have combined chloroquine with azithromycin. Azithromycin has also been shown that it is effective against the virus and when you use together they basically enhance it which means they are synergistic. But if you use this patient who have cardiac disease, it may also cause cardiotoxicity and by causing prolongation of the QT interval. So if the conclusion of this is that they said basically the viral load in the nasal swab is becoming less, but they does not discuss what is the effect on the outcome, whether there was any difference in the death or the recovery. So which means we need more studies and the WHO is also promoting more mega trial on these medicine. Then the another medicine is called Remsedivir. It's basically was used initially for Ebola virus, but it didn't work last year. And now FDA has approved this for compassionate use only. And the clinical trial are needed to see whether actually it works or not. Another drug which is from the Japan, it's called Japan flu drug called Flaviprivir and it has and the Ministry of China Science and Technology, they said it is effective, it's working, but the results have not been published. Some immunosuppression are also being tried and the most which everyone is looking is the vaccine. But as you know, the vaccine take long time, 6 to 12 months. Although some trial they have been started in US, but there's a long time until we get for the routine patients. Now, why the stem cell, the role of the stem cell is being ignored in the US? There is a lot of resistance from the pharma giants because it might work in many serious issues and it will impact their revenue and the patient will no longer rely on expensive medicines. This is a very interesting study. They did basically, they used uh, stem cell. The origin was umbilical cord dry mesenchymal stem cell. They used in seven patients. The dose was one million per kg body weight. 
they injected in the veins and what they saw that within two days the symptom and the lung function improved and at 10 days one severe patient and two common patient they were discharged and after the treatment they saw the normally in covid viral infection the peripheral lymphocyte become less but with this the number of lymphocyte increased and also other regulatory cells and after this treatment the inflammatory marker were less crp became less alpha tumor negative factor become less and hyperreactive t cell and the natural killer cell they disappear within 3 to 6 days another important finding was they did the gene expression and they found that msc they are negative for ace 2 which means they are free from covid 19 infection or resistance to this infections now these umbilical cord they were allogenic they were commercially prepared and uh, they basically prevent the complication when you take the stem cell from the patient body and they also been shown that they are effective and for proliferation and migration but lot of uh, but this is also debatable and it need more studies are only umbilical stem cell derived stem cell are effective no any stem cell from bone marrow from fat or from allogenic they may have a similar effect so why did they use allogenic umbilical cord because if a sick patient is coming or critically severe patient is coming you need to extract the stem cell from fat or from the bone marrow and it usually take three to four weeks for multiplying their number from few thousand to millions in the lab which was not possible for this patient that's why they used it so is there any stem cell that they can reduce or reverse the damage of COVID-9 viral infection and save life? Yes, they might play a role, particularly in severe and critical patients. What happened when you give IV stem cell, they get trapped in the lung, in the veins and the tissue. And which is the main target of COVID-19, the lung? Because these stem cells are resistant, because of absence of the receptor through which this virus is entering our cell, they stay there, they fight the damage caused by the virus. So how they do? Basically they fight our overactive immunological response, which means they fight the strong. They reduce inflammation, they increase anti-inflammatory factors, and they promote the lung healing. So they improve overall lung microenvironments. They help in their alveolar epithelial cells, prevent the fibrosis and improve the lung function. So if a patient of severe or if any patient who have multiple comorbidity and there is a high index of suspicion that within few days this patient is going to end up into a severe and critical. So with a simple procedure, bone marrow can be taken and or a simple fat and it can be sent to the lab and it can be multiplied and that can be used later on if the patient goes into that stage. What are the possible problems with the stem cell for COVID infection? Expensive? Well, if you compare the cost of a patient with severe and critical sickness who is in the ICU for one week or maybe many weeks that cost is too much in comparison to the cost of the stem cell it will be way down less than the total cost time limit yes usually it takes three to four weeks but as i told if we are taking harvesting the cells with a potential patient who is having comorbidity we can save this time also there may be some social and culture concern. Safety issue? Well, until now, they have been uh, proven safe, but it need more randomized study. And also the another regenerative factor is the exosomes. So some people are using exosome secretome as an inhaler and in idiopathic lung fibrosis. 
So the main message is COVID-19 infection has become pandemic. The number of infect new infections are increasing. It's more affecting the critically elderly patients who have a lot of comorbidity. The death rate is also high in those patients. And I think if we use the stem cell as an additional treatment, whether you use antiretroviral, chloroquine, or whether you use vaccines, it will be effective. Because other treatment options, they are preventing the viral infection or viral entry into the cell or viral replication. What about if there is already a damage by the virus? That cannot be reversed. But if you use the stem cell, which has a property to reduce inflammation, promote healing and regeneration, so we can prevent the death. So in the conclusion, we need to stay home, follow the UA government DHA MOH guidelines and maintain safe social distancing, maintain personal hygiene, maintain good nutrition, take care of your elderly and children. And in the end, this is the how we will win. Desperate time is desperate measure and this is the desperate time. Thank you.